Welcome to The Simple Truth. I'm John Furnish, your Bible teacher. I hope you've been following along with me and writing down the scriptures that I read to you and, 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 and try to help you to make sense of. Uh, it's important that we we'd study the Word. Uh, last week I started a study on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and why it's important to us. Uh, I tried to bring out that we are baptized uh, because Jesus asked the Father for us to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit be sent to us so that it, it can help us with our daily living. It is the power to live a Christian life. It is the power that helps us to overcome sin. It is the renewing of, of, of us with the Word and the power of the Holy Spirit of letting us to understand what the word means and how it affects us and how to apply it to our lives. And as we go on today, uh, I want to carry on with that, except, except I want to go a little bit farther, and that is the power for the witness and service of the Holy Spirit. And so today I want to start in Luke chapter 24. And I want to start with verse 46. And he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of the Father on you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Now, understand this was after the resurrection that Jesus is talking to the disciples. He is flesh and, blown, and bone. Uh, if you step back to verse 39, it says, Behold my hands and feet, that I am I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And then in verse 41, he says, Have you any food? So he not only presented himself in a physical body, he wasn't some ghostly apparition or mist or fog or whatever you want to call it. Uh, he was flesh and he was that flesh and bones. Uh, he, he could eat uh, and with them. And then he started in this um, narration that these things that has happened to him were written beforehand about these things that he needed to suffer and die for them, and on the third day rise again. It was all prophesied uh, in, in the laws of Moses. Uh, it was told to us by the prophets and in the Psalms. Uh, those are the things that we can go back in the Old Testament and if we need to look at and say, yes, this was prophesied and Jesus fulfilled them. And he fulfilled all the prophecies that were in the Old Testament about the coming Messiah. And then he said, these things were done so that, in verse 47, repentance and remission of sins could be preached in, all, in his name, in the name of Jesus, to all nations. And we start in Jerusalem. We start where we're at. Uh, you and I can't all go to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit to descend on us at, like at this time in, in the Word. But we can have our own Jerusalem right here. When we are saved and we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, He allows the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in us. Well, where's the temple of God at? Well, it was in Jerusalem, and now with the Holy Spirit in you, Oh, gee, we're the temple of God now. So we need to start right where we're at. We start need to, to study the Word and understand that all this had to be done so that repentance and remission, get this, so that repentance can be, I want to say study, but, but be 
talked about be brought out into the open that we have a need for God. We have a need for Jesus to forgive us. We have, uh, as some say, that, that God-shaped hole in our heart that needs to be filled, and only Jesus can fill it. Uh, we might try to fill it with everything else, you know, sports, uh, money, uh, prestige, uh, power in this world, uh, those kinds of things, but it's not going to fit because it just won't fit in the hole that God has made for us. And he wanted us to understand that we are sinners, that we need salvation. And, and the great thing about it, we're not just talking about repentance, but the remission, the doing away with, the taking away, the forgiveness that God has for us. And this, both of these things need to be preached to all the world, starting at this time in Jerusalem. Jesus is talking to the disciples there. But today he's talking to you and I. It needs to start right here. And then we reach out. We are those witnesses. The disciples this time, they seen these things happen. They seen, walked with Christ for three and a half years, I believe it is. They seen him crucified. They now see him resurrected. They can testify of all these things that Jesus did that was foretold by the prophets in the Old Testament. And then he tells them in verse 49, Behold, I send the promise of the Father. Well, what did the Father promise? He promised them power. He promised them power from on high to live in this world and to glorify Him. Now, let's go to chapter 1 of Acts. Chapter 1 of Acts was, was written by the, the, the Dr. Luke, as we call him. And in verse 5... He tells us, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. If you remember in the, in the, in the New Testament, Jesus breathed on the disciples and they got or received the Holy Spirit. Now, receiving the Holy Spirit... And allowing him to empower us is two different things. One is receiving that this is an interest payment, an earnest payment, that for a future time of eternity. But here he's saying, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many henceforth. Why? You know, isn't even having the Holy Spirit in us in the beginning at, when we're saved enough? After all, He helps us to, to live better. He helps us to change our lives. He helps us to be more, you know, a, know what sin is and uh, helps us not to sin. Isn't that enough? Well, actually, no. Look what He says in verse 7. We'll start with verse 7. Uh, but actually verse 8 is what we want. Uh, he said to them, It is not for you to know the time or seasons which the Father has put into his own authority. Jesus is telling them, See, they was thinking naturally here, Is the kingdom of God going to become now? Well, the kingdom of God is not an earthly kingdom as we think of kingdoms. It is a spiritual kingdom, and God is the, the ruler of it. And his son is over it, but it's empowered by the Holy Spirit, and it's all about faith. It's all about who he is. It's all about uh, us in agreement with the faith of God. Verse 8, but you, the disciples, and today you and me, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He's telling the disciples, when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, when you have that baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're going to receive power to be what? Witnesses. They had witnessed all these things about Jesus in a historical manner. But now they were going to be witnesses of his 
supernatural power. And they wanted, told him to start in Jerusalem, stretch out to Judea, go on out to Samaria, and then to the ends of the world. That commandment is still going on today through you and me. Where's Jerusalem? It's right here in you. As I said before, you are the temple of God because the Holy Spirit is in you. Your Jerusalem is where you're at. You don't have to go over there. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. You do it right here. You're there. And then you keep reaching out. As I've told you before, uh, I taught a Bible study, and then I became a pastor, and, and now I'm teaching a Bible study on a TV program called The Simple Truth. Wow, and it's going out everywhere. If you've got internet or Facebook, or it's going out there. And I can't hardly believe that somebody like me has that privilege. But it's for us to be witnesses, to tell other people about what God has done in our lives, what he can do in their lives. We are to be a blessing and to testify of what God has done. Our testimony is not ours, but what God has done in us and through us. That's the testimony that brings glory to God. And it's all because of the power of the Holy Spirit. What I can't do, the Holy Spirit gives me power to do. I can't understand the word on my own. It wouldn't make any sense. But with the Holy Spirit empowering me to understand and empowering you to understand and giving you revelations of what is saying, then we can increase. Now, let's go to John chapter 20. Back to the book of John, the Gospel of John chapter 20. And I want to take a look at verses 21 and 22. And it reads, So Jesus said to them, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sin of any, they are retained. Now, isn't that amazing that Jesus said, here's my peace to you. But remember, as the Father sent me here to do a, a service, to perform a job, if you might want to put it that away, to bring God's love to the world and to demonstrate his love to the world and to bring salvation to the world. And he did it all by dying for us. He gives the example. He encourages us to follow that example. And then he gives us the power to do those things. And then he breathed on them and gave them the Holy Spirit. Now, we know that, that they received the Holy Spirit, but it wasn't a baptism. It was just the receiving of the Holy Spirit. It was a symbolic of what Pentecost in chapter 2 of Acts shows, of the, that the Holy Spirit came as a sounding like a rushing wind and like tongues of fire and set on each one of them. That's when the first, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit happened to the church. Just the same as when God breathed life into Adam in Genesis, uh, the book of Genesis, in the beginning, God breathed the Holy Spirit, breath, life, into the church with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that we have this awesome responsibility of being witnesses for God about what his son has done so that sin can be forgiven or 
that salvation and reject it. And that's an individual basis. It's not. You can't get in on your grandparents or your parents' uh, salvation. It has to be your personal relationship. I want you to understand that in my life for many years, I knew all about a historical, historical Jesus. I knew that he was a virgin birth. I knew he was sinless. I knew that he died on the cross for my sins. And I knew he'd raised the three, that third day. I knew all those things, believed all those things, but I didn't have a personal relationship with him. And it's important that you and I have that personal relationship with him and have this baptism of the Holy Spirit that we're talking about. Uh, go to Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16. And I, I believe I want to start with uh, verse 13. Now, I just kind of give you a little testimony of my life. So uh, look at verse 13. And when Jesus came into Caesarea Philippi, he said to his disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say you're John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say I am? You see, there is... It's not a matter of what the world thinks. It's not about what other people think. Who do you personally say Jesus is? If you're going to talk about a historical, that's one thing. But when it's made personal, who is he to you? Is he just a historical figure or is he a personal friend, a personal savior, a personal Lord? That's what he's wanting to know from, from his disciples at this time. In verse 16, Simon Peter says, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Isn't that the greatest thing that anyone could ever say? I know who you are. I have met you. I've accepted you. And you are who you say you are. You're the Son of God. You are the Messiah to the Jews. You are the Savior to the world. Verse 17, And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and... Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Wow, what about power? Let's, let's, first of all, he said, Peter, you're blessed, because somebody didn't teach you this. This revelation of who Jesus is was given to him by the Father in heaven. It was revealed to him in a supernatural way. It was not taught to him in, in the Bible school. It was not taught in Sunday school. It was taught to him by revelation. And many times, for the Word of God, it will give you a revelation that you need to have to live day to day. And it's the Holy Spirit that helps us to receive that revelation, uh, to, to hear the Father. Uh, Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice and my sheep will follow me. Well, we need to hear God's voice. And the Holy Spirit is the one that helps us to hear the Father's voice. And he went on and said, he said to Peter, now, you are Peter. And he's talking about, you are a little rock. Just a little rock. On this rock, I will build my church. Now, he's not talking about Peter. He's talking about the revelation that Peter had. The revelation that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Savior of the world, that Jesus is the Son of God. It's that revelation that the church is built on. And when it's built on that revelation, with Jesus the foundation that we, we live on, Stood up by, by you know, the, the apostles and the prophets. But Jesus is that sure foundation, that cornerstone that makes everything fit in the place that it needs to fit. 
the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Whatever the enemy wants to do, it will never overcome the church of Jesus Christ. The one that believes, accepts, and receives him as Savior. The one that will trust Christ in the worst of situations and still maintain faith in God. And they will see the glory. They will see what God had in plan. He said in 19, the kingdom of heaven, I will give you the keys or the authority. Keys will show the authority of heaven. I'll give it to you. We don't get that unless we have the anointing of God. Unless we have the Holy Spirit. And, and in, the, in the Holy Spirit, we must be able to submit to God to allow the Holy Spirit to have control. It is not uh, the idea that, that uh, I no longer have control because you do. You have a choice to make each and every time the Holy Spirit speaks to you. You have a choice to make of accepting it or not. You have a choice that when he asks you to do something of doing it or not, you always have a choice. So it's not like he is a dictator over your life. He is a gentleman. He loves you. He wants the best for you. And following him is always the best. But you have people that are kind of contrary. I, I don't know how many times I've argued with God about something he wanted me to do. It took a year for me to take this program. I understand that. But when you do it, you understand that God is in it. God wants to be a, a part of your everyday life. And he gives us the keys, the authority of heaven, that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever is loosened on earth is loose in heaven. Think about the authority that you and I have. That we can bind evil here on earth. Or we can let it run rampant. It is up to you and I. We're in that time of year when we're talking about elections and the presidents and all that kind of stuff. You know what? It's not about them. It's about us following after Christ. It is about you and I saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I trust the Holy Spirit for it. Now, let us go to uh, 2 Corinthians, if I can real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1, and I want to start with verse 21. Now, he who established us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God, who has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee... He that, that established us, Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one who has established us. And it was by God's directive, by the plan that God had from the beginning. That's what was ordained. That's what was preordained. That's what he was going to give each one of us a chance to accept Christ or not accept Christ. It is up to you and I. But he has, but for us who has trusted in Christ, God established us in Christ and has anointed us. We are anointed. We are set aside, sanctified, and anointed with power by the Holy Spirit. All, God, all of, the, of the plan that God had for your life and for my life. He has sealed us in the Holy Spirit. He has put the Spirit in our hearts so that we have, a, wow, the heart of God in us. 
available to us and able to show to other people. And in that, we have this guarantee of the Spirit. The baptism of the, Harris, of the Holy Spirit is a guarantee of the love that God has sealed you and I with so that we can be these witnesses that can touch people's lives, not with words alone, but with signs and wonders. We can touch other people's lives by what we preach, by the way we live, but also by demonstrating the power of God through the Holy Spirit. It is not for you and I to be glorified in. If I pray for someone and they get healed, it's not me that did the healing. My part, my part is to lay hands on the sick, pray without doubt, and trust God for the healing. And everything that we do, those three things are necessary. Or at least two things are necessary. We don't have to touch everybody. Uh, prayer will go anywhere. I need to trust without doubt that God is with me, that His Holy Spirit is leading me, that I can trust Him and the things that I can't do myself, He can accomplish. You see, we can if we can believe that we receive, and even when we don't see it, we still believe, there'll come a time when we can believe and receive and see it all together. And that's what you and I need to practice. That's what you and I need to be witnessing about, of the great things God has done in your life, my life, those around us. We should rejoice every time that someone gets saved, just as the angels in heaven. But we should also rejoice every time that we hear the glory of God that has fallen into someone's life, whether it be financially, spiritually, uh, their, their health, whatever. Those things glorify God. Those things are the things that you and I need to be about. That is the power for witnessing and the power for service that only comes to us with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus started his ministry after the Spirit set and stayed on him. For you and I, we need that same power today. That's what the church was started with, and that's what the church will end with, the power of God. God bless you, and we will see you next week. Amen. I'm Pastor Jeff Peterson. I host a weekly program on WTJR entitled To Know Christ. It's a weekly Bible study where we may be studying books of the Bible, various topics of the Bible, sometimes the Bible stories, but it's certainly a time of enriching. I know that you will be inspired by these words and an opportunity to grow in your faith. Well, God bless you and I hope that you can join me. sent his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John chapter 3 verse 17. Today's encouraging word has been brought to you by your friends at the Christian Television Network.